and I will see you later. See you later. So I will let you go around 35 minutes after whatever hour. All right, very good. I'll sort you five. <clears throat> <clears throat> Ew, this is Pentium. Hey, Pentium, long time no here. Ah, uh, Max, how are you? Okay, I'm good. I'm good. That is good. I'm glad to hear that. Very busy up here. Ah, uh, what's new? Well, just, you know how far away we are. We're getting a little bit closer now. It's coming to an end. The anomaly is going to finish by February 3rd. So it, we're at the end. You said you are busy, right? What's, what what, what, what keeps, keeps you busy? Well, we are redoing some of the uh, colonies, updating all the time, of course, because the uh, Fendorians and Syrians have, are the new members of our group, and they have made some great um, improvements. Uh, which of the Syrians? The Syrians? Which of the Syrians? There is tons of different Syrians. Yes. They're, well, this is a group of several hundred thousand that have joined us because they are, support our cause. It is not the whole race of the, the Syrian people, but it's several hundred thousand that are part of our group now. Uh, is it Sirius A or B or C? Oh, it's Sirius A, of course. And uh, what culture is that? Which culture? It's not, the, it's not the aquatic portion. It's more of the light being portion, the very light beings. Uh -huh. that are like close to sixth dimension, but they are still in fifth. They are similar to the Arcturians and the uh, Fendorians. Ah. They are where Sentia's group is from. Ah, okay. Do they have, do they have a name? They just call themselves Syrians. Ah. They do not want to be... Um, Diversified. Okay. Um, do they look like humans? No, not really. They are very, uh, well, they do have, they are um, bipedal, uh -huh. but they are not, uh, they're very light and they have a, a lot of light to them. They have a glow to them. You, their features are a little washed out when you look at them. Mm -hmm. Because they do not, they don't have the exterior like we do. It's very uh, invisible, like that you can see through them a bit. Ah, are they related to Earth humans, to dogs, and to dolphins? <laughs> From the distant past, yes. We have a country called Syria. Are they related? Are they have have they been on in Syria when it started? No, no, they have. That's well, actually, they have been there, yes. But because the country is named Syria, is not because of them, no. Oh, not? But they have been there, yes. But I do not think it's named after them. You see, the, the country was named Syria, and the star system was named Sirius. So it was, there's two different uh, verbal beginnings. One is Latin and one is Greek or something. So I'm not sure. But and they come from two different uh, languages, language bases. And the Dagon tribe, Dagon tribe from Africa, they say they are from Sirius. Um, yes, they, like, they are more related to Sirius, yes. Is it, would it be the same race or different race? 
that is a different portion of their population. However, it is uh, definitely related to them as far as in their planetary, in their four planets there, yes. So our dogs and dolphins are coming from the same world? Yes, they are some from the same area of space, yes. Same area of space, all right. Yeah, she's crazy enough, yes. Good. And we will send energies for that and send positivities. There are those on your planet. We have picked up on several hundred that are ready to move into the fourth dimension, but we cannot let them move into the, well, they will move in at their own pace, of course, but it would not be right for them to move into the fourth dimension quite yet. So right. we're tr actually trying to keep some from moving into to the fourth dimension because it will be cause a scandalous uh, time on your planet but um, it is an interesting time definitely there are those that are ready to move and those that are far 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 from ready to move uh-huh um, what are the symptoms of being ready You'll feel lighter, you'll be constantly in a positive frame, almost constantly, and you will be able to communicate and see into the fourth dimension. You'll be able to um, feel the energies of the fourth dimension and also be able to bring back information from the fourth dimension that is vital to yourself and others. You will feel the, you will be able to talk to those in the fourth dimension about moving into it. Um, there are several hundred that are in this particular way, and the, their vibration is over the, the five or six points that is necessary for this kind of movement, but yet you can move up to most people can move to a 12-point a vibration, but it's not necessary for some people to, with that high of a vibration. It can be reached at lower vibrations with the right thought processes and positivity. Uh -huh. um, when they are that high in, uh, in their vibration, is there 3D life becomes easier or otherwise? It, yes, in some cases it does. And I'll tell you why. It's because they're moving through third dimension and not really dealing with the density part. They're, they're not dealing with the harshness of the third dimension as much as they used to. And so when these things happen that are harsh, they become easier to move through and they do not lose their positive edge and so they move through these things with only a slight bit of drag if you if you know what i mean mm -hmm. they do, they not they don't fully feel the negativity of it but they understand it for what it is and how it can be used in a positive way they take negativity and push it into positive realms uh huh. Is Jim one of the, those who is ready? He's on the verge, but he's not going to leave. No. Is he in the proper state? Yes, but he has a mission, so there is no room for him to translate into fourth dimension because he knows he has to stay in third, and he will stay in third dimension. My question is uh, different. It's not, will he leave? But it's a question, uh, looking at Jim, could we recognize the traits of being ready? Yes, about 85%. Uh-huh. So it is not a question that people would have no information. So people will be informed. When they have to decide to go or not to go, they will be fully informed about the move, right? Because they will Yes, see they will. In many ways, they will be informed because there will be something instinctive within them that will have to get the information. 
they have to know what is happening because many of them will question what they are feeling and why they are feeling so differently than they've ever felt before. They will seek out an answer for that and we will definitely give it to them. There is no way that they will not want to know what's happening. But uh, why do you need to give it to them if they already have the ability to see through, right? So they can see well, themselves, right? We need to speak to them and let them know what all this entails. We need to let them know that they're, even though they are ready for a fourth dimension, we would prefer they not move that way for a little while yet. Um, are you able to visit the surface of the fourth dimensional Earth? Yes. So it's fully open for you? Yes, that part is fully open to us. We are allowed to visit the Earth in fourth dimension, yes, but not in third. So your ships come down? We have several ships around, but not as close as we used to be because of the anomaly. They're about 9 million miles out of Earth's atmosphere at this point, but we are getting closer. We've moved 300,000 miles closer within the past few days, and we expect to be moving another few hundred thousand miles closer uh, toward the 10th of January because the anomaly is getting smaller toward the, as it's moving through, it's getting smaller at the end portion. You okay. might think it would get bigger, but it is actually more voluminous in the center. Do the people of Terraha, do they uh, have the um, ships? Pardon me? Uh, in the previous session, I was told that the four-dimensional Earth is called Terra Ha. Yes, so, I understand, Terra Ha, yes. So these, do Terra Hans have the um, uh, ships, spaceships? Yes, they do have ships, yes. So they can live with the, whenever they want to, right? Yes, and they can... They don't have to interact with third dimension at all, you understand. Same as we don't have to interact with you if we don't wish to. If we do not have the right technology turned on, we cannot see you at all. But within our technical scope, we can find third dimension easily. But we do not have to. We can pass right through third dimension. Uh, my, question is we wish. my question is different. Yes. Uh, so after people shift to the Terraha, yes. there is the community there. So that community is open galactic community. They have the ships and they can travel through galaxy uh, as they wish. Oh, yeah, yes. So are there bad guys on Earth, four-dimensional? Terraha, are there like uh, the Cabal, is it they're also known Terraha? There are some... Cabal in Terraha, yes. Absolutely. Just a second. Um, thank you. So the question was, um, uh, As the, the Earth military uh, pres are the Earth military present on Terraha? The three 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 D military, American three D military, are they present on Terraha? Yes, in some ways. Is there a conflict going on there, or is it like all formalized? It's. It's not a conflict, not at this time. It's hard to explain, but they, uh, there are some from your third dimension that know, know how to move to fourth dimension 
because of alien technology. Uh -huh. So therefore, they have gone there. They cannot stay there, but they, uh -huh. can, they can go there. Okay. So. So when they come, they have certain status. They have what status? Certain status. Um, they are actually... Ah, yes, they have a certain status that is what you call temporary. Uh-huh. They cannot stay for more than so many days without starting to dissolve. Right. How many days? 34. Uh-huh. So most of them do not even stay 30. Okay. Because you start to feel the effects of it before you start to dissolve, of course. And it's not a good feeling. It start to be, you start to be disrupted. You're starting to feel nauseous. You start to feel achy. You'll start to feel many things before you start to dissipate. Sounds familiar. All right. Um, switching to the next question. We have about 10 minutes. I'm writing a book with Jim and others about uh, our friends. And of course, Yael are uh, among the top of our friends. I was even thinking about naming the book like Pleiadians and Yael, something of that sort. But in any case, um, let's start collecting more information about Yael, whatever you can um, uh, put in the book. That transcript, you can just possibly transcribe and put, it there, put there as is. I Can see. you give us an introduction to Yael civilization, like the 10 minute description of history and current state? Well, yes, all right. This is a book that's already been thought of. Right. Yes. What you would like to do is this. Well, you would like to get um, a small recording from each of the people, each of your main characters that are alien, such as Takur and Nakash, and have them tell a little bit about themselves and their societies and what they do. And that, therefore, it will bring some interest to sections of the channeling that they were, are involved in. So to preface the chapter where mostly Takur is in, you might want her to tell a little bit about herself and her people and her culture, and then do the then have the channelings transcribed, and and she would also would give them a little bit of more understanding who she is and how she the reasons why she channels the way she does, and then Lakesh the same thing. You would have him do a little history of himself, who he is, why he does what he does a little bit about his culture, and then do some Lakesh transcriptions and see how that um, adds color to what he has to say. Excellent. Uh, can you answer a specific question? So I'm still confused. I'm, I, I'm, my understanding is very little on origins of Yeyel. Where from did you come? We are very ancient. So we have come from, uh, actually our origins are not even in the Pleiades. Mm -hmm. We are from um, the Taurus area, actually. Do you know mm -hmm. what that is? Of course. We are from uh, the Taurus area, and our beginnings were very, mm, what is your word? Humble. Uh -huh. And we did look like humans from very early on. And our planet was not seeded quite like yours was. Of course, there was some seeding, of course, in the very beginnings. But in, in our case, we developed um, the human look more naturally. Um, so we do look more human than any other species. But your human look was developed by many other species and very many other hybridizations, whereas ours wasn't. And, but even though we are like 97% of your DNA, we have about 97% similar DNA to you, that is, some of that is coincidental. 
because of the way that hybridization took place on your planet. And that is something that is very curious and that we have been looking into for thousands of years because there is no reason for your DNA to be as close to ours as it is, except by natural selection and the, and the kind of planet that you have, which is similar to our beginning planets. So, or planet, I should say. Wow. So what happens is natural selection, because of your atmosphere, the distance from the sun, the gravity, etc., and the chemicals that are in your atmosphere, has brought you to a closer look at us. And then, of course, there was one point where we did do our own hybridization program thousands of years ago on your planet, and it just so happens that your look did not change really that much, but we are, you did become a little closer. But um, there's many, many mysteries about our two species, and we're wondering if there is some even more ancient connection, because we do not understand how we are so closely uh, related in some ways. Who are your ancestors or as, a, as a race? Uh, the ancestors are not called Yuyil. The ancestors are called the Fenzi. You've heard of the Fenzi, I'm sure. But they are no longer around. A lot, not in this galaxy or in any galaxy that we know of. The Fenzi have disappeared from space. Unless they are somewhere several hundred galaxies away at this time. We have not heard of them for several uh, thousand years. Uh-huh. Um, so are they, from which star were they, do you know? The legends or the thoughts that they came from uh, um, the Andromeda area are scattered. Some say Andromeda, some say Alpha Centauri, and others say that they came from the Taurus area also. But it is not, uh, we do not believe they came from Taurus area. They, they definitely did not come from this area. That has been proven over and over again, but either, even though some still claim that they are from Taurus area. But I believe my thought process is that they are from Alpha Centauri area, but not this galaxy, the next one over, which I do not know what the name is for your people is. The, the next one behind this one. Okay. Um, by the way, what is the name of our um, constellation of the Earth Sol, solar star constellation? You mean our name for it? Uh, more like galactic name for it. Oh, Kaliar Shoshin. Say again. Kaliar Shoshin. Kaliar Shoshin. Yes. What other stars are included in this constellations? Constellation. You mean in the galaxy? Yeah. Like when there are many, look, many. When we look at, uh, say, our constellations, we assume we know that the stars there are kind of together because they're about the same size they're bright. So yes. when, when you look at our solar system and neighbor stars, possibly it is a constellation. So yeah. stars are in, included in these constellations. Oh, there are, there are seven, no, yes, there are seven stars in the constellation that you appear from our angle. Uh -huh. Your plan, your sun is called Kaliar Shoshin, but the constellation is Piren. Piren. So I can say that I'm from Piren constellation, uh, Sol star, third planet, Terra, right? It is actually, if you look at the constellation, it looks like almost a half circle with a, a, a line over. So it's five stars and then one in. So, and you are on the circular part on the third one from the right. Okay. Third star from the right. And it would be third star from the left too? 
Uh, is it the third star from the left as well? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Um, the last question I have, I think you answered it before, but um, can you repeat? So is it right that uh, the Jews were seated on the planet or created on the planet as Yael? So basically it was Yael who mixed with the uh, Earth humans. That is what, yes, there is a great deal of evidence that points to the Jewish people being more Yugil than any other species on your planet. Uh, are there any other races who have elevated Yael? Any other human races? There is, well, the Oriental people have a lot of Octorian. Ah. But there is Yugil there also. Ah. But the Yugil also in Africa, um, in the very southern portion, and Yugil also in South America, near where the uh, Nazga lines are. Aha. Uh -huh. So which tribe in South Africa would it be? I do not know the name of the tribe. It would be in um, South Africa, all, uh, the, the northern part of South Africa. Would it be blacks, African blacks? Yes, it would be, they were a dark-skinned. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, yes. And uh, lighter in, in South America, lighter skinned. Uh-huh. Interesting. Uh-huh. Um, so there is a story that the Jews were, um, how do you call them? Just, just a second. The Egyptian pharaohs had the dynasty which were Jews, and I forgot the name of those. Do you remember that? And I, I wonder if these were Yael. Um, say that again. Uh, Egyptian, pharaohs, Egyptian pharaohs. Uh, at some point, there were foreigners who conquered Egypt. And there was a series of Egyptian pharaohs who were outside of Egypt. And there is a belief that these were Jews, and I wonder if Yahiel as civilization were involved in that. As a civilization, we were not. They, they traveled there on their own. But... What is uh, Yahiel? But they were Yahiel in some... Yes. Anyway. I'm blanking on the... On, name. One moment, please. I'm having some technical difficulties. All right. We have lost your picture. That's okay. It's it's connection. That's okay. All right. If you would like us, can you still see us? Yes. That is interesting. It is interesting that you can see us and we cannot see you. Uh huh. Hebrew pharaohs. I kind of can't remember. They, I remember they, were, they wore beards and hats, but somehow the name escaped. There you are. We found you again. Uh huh. Go ahead. The name of the Egyptians that came. You mean the the name of the Jews that came in? Uh yeah. The, that race was had a name. And there was a period in Egyptian history which had that name. And I'm kind of blanking on it. Just as Hexus. Yeah, Hexus. They were called Hexus. Yes. So I wonder if Hexus were Yael. Yes, they, there was. But they traveled on their own. They did, we did not land there or... or um, we were not really part of the Egyptian culture that much, but we did travel there mm -hmm. from uh, the, uh, some of the people that were created, were, PA, were traveling there. Actually, Egyptian culture has much to do with Jewish culture as well, especially in the early portions of it. Uh-huh. 
they did they did have a lot to do with uh, Jewish the Jewish people. Also, there was a story that uh, Jews were present or Yehiel were present in uh, what's it country in Bengali Bengali what Bengalians were Yehiel? Yes, that's fine. There are several countries that have many Yehiel people in them. Ah, are many Yehiel beginnings, I should say. I would not consider them our people now. They are more humanized. All right. So what is um, the relation between Yael and Zetas? Zeta Grays? Yeah. There is a great difference. Although mo they believe most Grays have a beginning together, and we have uh, some beginnings in the Gray culture, of course, but we were, I think we were... Uh, more advanced than the early greys. The early greys did not evolve quickly. It took them a, a great deal more time to evolve than, than we did. The zeta greys are still negatively charged, or at least a great percentage of them are still very uh, primitive as far as their survival instincts are concerned. They feel that everyone is out to get them. They're paranoid. And so therefore they must conquer before they are conquered. And so they feel that everyone, and even, even though they do work with the reptilians, they, they feel the reptilians to be uh, secondary to them. They're, that they are smarter than the reptilians, although there are some species of reptilians that I believe are even greater than the Zetas in intelligence wise. But mm -hmm. they find them to be good workers with them because they feel that they are smarter than they are and they can handle them in some respects. And also reptilians find greys repulsive as far as flavor, so they don't eat them. So, um, <laughs> the, so they can work together and not be hostile with one another and still do many uh, negative things. So the Zeta reptilians and Zeta greys work together. And they are from, they are definitely from the Andromedan area. There's a great many reptilians and greys in the Andromedan area. So historically they came from there? I believe so, yes. Ah. Especially, there is a, especially a lot of reptilians in Andromeda and a lot of greys. There is uh, probably more reptilians than greys in Andromeda. But of course, you have to understand that your culture has named 12 different Andromedas, Andromeda 1 through 12. So, but I'm talking about Andromedas um, 2, 3, 5, 2, 3, 4, 5. Those four Andromedas definitely have a lot of greys and, and reptilians. Are you talking about stars or galaxies? Uh, galaxies. Wow. Okay. Um, so, Bashar mentioned that Yahil are one of the hybrid races made by Zetas. Is it right? Well, that is something that we have always questioned. Um, they, there seems to be some hybridization that comes from that area. Yes. We will say that they, we do share some DNA with the Zetas, but it goes back very, very far. So to answer that correctly, I would have to gather more information. All right. That's efficient. But since then, you won't partnering. We are not partnering, no. Um, their ideals are different than ours. We have grown apart. If we ever were together, we have grown apart in the way that we, we react to the dimensional shifts. We've changed our thought processes on negative and positivity. We've learned to cope with survival in a much different way.
way, and we've learned to uh, you, um, become friendly with the galaxy instead of uh, fearful of the galaxy. So we have developed in a totally different way than they have. They have seemed to continue to reproduce their negativities on every generation. And it, no one, nothing has seemed to burst forth out of that except for the survival and the paranoid instincts that have been taught to them. Now, I am sure that there have been some that have uh, tried to break away from that, but it's so strongly ingrained that they were probably not successful, or I can see that they have not been. Either that or they have become part of another um, gray species, which there are several. There are some gray species that are much more advanced than the Zetas. Okay, um, I have to clarify. So it looks like, um, I think I remember that um, the initial hybridization program and abductions on Earth about 50 to 20 years ago were done by a lot a lot of that was done by Yael and Zetas, right? And it's like your involvement was close to half of that abduction. Yes, we did do a lot of that. That's true. It was for scientific, uh, but we were not the cruel ones. Zetas did the cruel things with their abductions, and we did some, le we did not do the cruel abduction kinds of things, but more psychological exploration and we understood the physiology of humans so we wanted to do more psychological uh, portfolios were you working together and were there like uh, because there yeah. were reports of tall grays and short grays being in the same room were you the tall grays um we were not in the same room with them no we were not we are actually the medium size, <laughs> but um, I'm a, a more medium size. But there were there are shorter grays and taller grays, of course. And the shorter grays are um, not you yield necessarily. There is a shorter portion of our population that is you yield, but I do not think that they would be seen with the zetas. Uh huh. So basically, my uh, when I interviewed one of the abductees, uh, they said that uh, short zetas, short grays are zetas, and they are robots, and uh, they are not very smart. And the tall ones are very smart and wise, and actually very humane. So the tall okay. ones were humane, and the short ones were very. Yes. Humane. There are some other gray species that are humane, other than the yu yo Uh-huh. So it wasn't yu yo in the same room with the... With no, the it was not. Not with the Zetas. We don't... Uh, the Zetas would try to get rid of us, as they might want to get rid of that other species in time, because they are very paranoid, unless they have some kind of contract with them that they are working together, but I cannot see a benevolent species working with them. Okay. Thank you. I, I ran out of time, so I have to let Jim go. Uh, thank you very much for your answers. I hope to continue that discussion, but I think we covered very essential initial questions because oh, very well. we needed to have them answered. It was very nice to speak with you again, Max. I haven't spoken to you for a while. Yeah, nice to speak to you as well. I, uh, I wish you could speak more. The life is so uh, dense with events here. Yes, I see that. Have a wonderful day. Wonderful day.
Hello? Hey, Jim. Thank Hi. You. Sorry I took more time, but we just ended up in a very um, charged area, so I had to clarify specific questions. Okay. So we Not a problem. I have went, a little... went over time for about seven minutes because I needed it to be um, clarified, otherwise it looked fishy. Okay, very good. All right, then. I will let you go, and I will eat something real fast. Yeah, I see you soon. And I will get with Dawid. All right. Okay. Say hi to him. All right, very good. Good day. Much love to you. Much love.